Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet this granny circle shoulder bag, which is a fun design both to crochet and to wear. This is a smaller size bag. It's approximately 11 inches by 11 inches laying flat, uh, excluding the handle. So this is my sample one here. Uh, the bag is created by working two granny circles and then by working your bottom sides and st shoulder strap all as one piece that are then that is then uh, inserted and crocheted to uh, the front and the back sides the bag has an opening here at the top if you would like you can add a button or a snap or a, a fastener to close it uh, it's a perfect size for something like a book a water bottle maybe your wallet your keys it was just a great handy little bag for going out of course if you wanted to take it to the market uh, you could definitely fill it with some lighter weight things as well for this project today i'm using a 100 percent worsted weight cotton so that's the number four weight cotton medium weight i'll be using the pima cotton by lion brand yarns you're going to need about uh, five different colors if you would like to have as much variation in it as I do. Uh, if not, then uh, you're welcome to use as many or as few as colors as you would like. So I'm going to be using this yarn. There is about 186 yards per ball. For your color A, you're going to uh, need about half of this ball. I'd say so about 100 to 150 yards. Um, if you want to adjust the size of your strap, then you may want a little bit more. Of the other ones, you're going to need about uh, a little less than 100 yards to 100 yards, depending on where they lay in your bag of your other four colors. Uh, and today I'm going to be using the colors Mademoiselle, Stone, Rain Cloud, Mulberry, and Pewter. So if I can show them all here to you and then a darker gray. Along with your yarn, you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook, as well as a pair of scissors and yarn needle for finishing off. Uh, I'll have links to all of these items in the description of this video. Also in the description of the video, I'll have a direct link to the free written pattern, which is on my blog at bridgetexturescrochet.com. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe and uh, take a look around the channel's updated weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. For our bag today, we're going to start by working the two side panels. Uh, so for these next steps, you're going to repeat and make two of these granny circles. Uh, I'll just be making one to show you here in the video today. The pattern is worked in rounds, so you're going to start by making your slip knot. And then by, with your color A, you're going to chain five and join with a slip stitch into your first stitch to make a ring. If you would prefer, you may use a magic ring as well. Once you have chained five, joined in the first stitch to make your ring, you'll begin round four. We're going to begin by chaining four, and this will count as a double crochet stitch and chain one. Next, double crochet and chain one 11 more times into your ring. So in total, you need to have 12 double crochet stitches and your 12 chain one spaces. So double crochet, chain one, all just into the center of your ring and you want to do this a total of 11 more times. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And then just double check that you've done 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus your chain four at the start means you have 12 double crochet stitches. Make another chain one and then join with a slip stitch. You're going to join into the third chain of that starting chain four. You should now have a ring. At this time, you can fasten off if you're going to switch colors, fasten off your color. A. For round two, you're going to take your color B and join that color B however you would like. You can begin by making a, uh, a slip knot on your hook and then you're going to join into any chain one space like so. And then start round two by chaining three. You're then going to into that same chain space. You're going to double crochet and chain one. Your chain three at the start also counts as a double crochet stitch. Next, you're going to skip the next double crochet and into the next chain one space. Work two double crochet stitches. And chain one. Repeat that all the way around. Into the next chain one space. Work two double crochet stitches. And chain one. Continue all the way around. When you come uh, to the end of your ring, you're going to uh, finish off with your chain one space and join with a slip stitch into the top of your chain three and you can then fasten off and uh, weave in any ends if you would like as you go. I am just at the end of my round two. Join with a slip stitch and then you can fasten off. At this time you're going to take your color C taking your color C you can join it in any chain one space And you're ready to begin round three. For round three, you'll chain three, work two more double crochets all into that chain one space, and chain one. Next, into the next chain one space, so you're skipping those two double crochet stitches, into the next chain one space, work three double crochets. and a chain one. You're going to repeat that all the way around. It, uh, skip the next two double crochets into the next chain one space, work three double crochets, and chain one. Continue all the way around, end off with your chain one, and join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three, and fasten off. For round four, you're going to take your color D and join in any of the chain one spaces. Begin by chaining three, which counts as a double crochet stitch, and then work three more double crochets all into the same space. Chain one, skip the next three double crochet stitches and into your next chain one space, work four double crochet stitches. Chain one. You're now going to repeat that all the way around, skip the next three double crochets into your next chain one space, 
work four double crochet stitches chain one and repeat continue all the way around when you come to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three for round five you're going to take your color e join with a slip stitch in any chain one space then begin by chaining three working one more double crochet into that same space and chain one you're then going to skip the next two double crochet stitches so that's uh, in this case it's my starting chain three and my next double crochet then working in between these next two stitches you're going to work two double crochet stitches so I'm just inserting my hook down in between the two stitches work two double crochets and chain one skip the next two double crochet stitches into the next chain one space work two double crochets and chain one you're then going to repeat that all the way around skip the next two double crochets in between the next two stitches insert your hook work two double crochets and a chain one skip the next two double crochet stitches and into the next chain one space work two double crochets and a chain one continue that all the way around to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three and then fasten off for round six you're going to take your color a join with a slip stitch into any chain one space and then you're going to repeat your round three for round three you chained three and worked two more double crochet stitches all into that same space chain one into the next chain one space work three double crochet stitches chain one into the next chain one space work three double crochet stitches continue that all the way around end off with a chain one and then join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three for round seven you're going to join your color b and in any chain one space next you're going to repeat what you did for round four so chain three into that same space work three double crochet stitches your chain three also counts as a stitch skip the next or chain one skip the next three double crochets into that next chain one space work four double crochet stitches chain one and repeat you're going to continue that all the way around when you come to your first stitch which is that starting chain three you'll end with a chain one and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch for round eight you're going to take your color C join your color C into any chain one space with a slip knot and you're now going to repeat your round five for round five you'll remember you chained three which counts as a stitch 
double crochet into that same space as joining chain one skip the next two double crochets and in between the next two stitches work two double crochet stitches chain one skip the next two double crochets and double crochet uh, work two double crochets into the next chain one space repeat that all the way around chain one skip the next two double crochets and in between the next two stitches work two double crochet chain one skip the next two double crochet stitches and work two double crochets into the next chain one space repeat that all the way around and when you come back to your first stitch which was that starting chain three you'll end with a chain one and join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch you can then fasten off your color C for round nine you're going to join your color D in any of the chain one spaces You can then chain three, which counts as a stitch, and then into that same chain one space, work three double crochet stitches. Or sorry, work two double crochet stitches. Your chain three at the start will count as a stitch. You're then going to skip the next double, two double crochet stitches, and into the next chain one space, work three double crochet stitches now this time when you are working around you are not working a chain one space in between that's the difference between this one and the other rounds so you're simply skipping the next two double crochets working three double crochets into the next chain one space skip the next two double crochets and work three double crochets into the next chain one space continue that all the way around and then when you come to your final or to your starting your final space and your first stitch join with the slip stitch into the top of that first stitch for round 10 uh, you, at the end of round nine you've joined with a slip stitch and you've fastened off for round 10 into any of your double crochet stitches so I'm just going to join in the same stitches joining you're going to join with your color E we're now going to work one final round in our granny circle and it's simply a single crochet into the same stitches joining working in your color E and then single crochet into each double crochet stitch all the way around so you're simply working one round of single crochet stitches in your color E all the way around when you come to your first stitch you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch then fasten off and weave in any ends and I've uh, I've been weaving in my ends here off camera but there will be quite a few of them if you haven't uh, woven them in as you went along so then you can go ahead weave in your ends uh, work this one round of single crochet stitches you're then going to go ahead and repeat the rounds one through to nine uh, all the way around for your second side so when you are finished you want to have two of these panels these granny circles and then you can meet me back here and we will work the bottom and handles and uh, join it all together so go ahead finish a single crochet in each stitch all the way around uh, repeat for your second side and then meet me back here Once you have completed round 10 
of your granny circle. You'll have a piece that looks like this. Fasten off, weave in all your ends. You're then going to go ahead and repeat this uh, for the second side of your bag. And then once the second side is finished, you can set them both aside. We're now going to work on the bag bottoms and sides and handles. They're worked all as one piece in our bag. You'll start by taking your color C or any color that you'd like, just one you have a little bit more of. Uh, my purple is what I used for mine. Make a slip knot, and then you're going to work a foundation chain of 193 chains. Uh, now you can change the size of your handle if you would like, make it longer or shorter. It's up to you. Um, and then change the number of stitches that you have in this foundation chain. But for mine, I just liked the length of that 193 stitches gave me. So you're going to go ahead, chain 193 chains. Then without twisting that chain, you'll want to join with a slip stitch into the first chain stitch. So go ahead, work 193 chains, and then meet me back here. When you join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, uh, you're going to want to make sure that the chain is not twisted and simply join in that first stitch to make a ring. We're now going to work round one of our bag side and handles. You're going to chain three, which will count as a double crochet stitch. You're then going to work one double crochet into each stitch, each chain, all the way around. So work one double crochet into each chain. I'm working in the back bumps simply because I uh, find that it's going to give me a bottom that's easier to work into when I'm joining my sides, but it's really up to you. Um, it's uh, just a personal preference. So work one double crochet in each chain all the way around. When you come to the beginning, join with a slip stitch into the top of your starting chain three. At the end of your round one, once again, make sure that your work is not twisted and then join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three. For round two, there's no need to turn your work. Chain three, which counts as a double crochet stitch. And then into the next stitch and into each stitch, all the way around, double crochet. You're going to uh, continue all the way around, join with a slip stitch into your top of your first stitch and chain three. And then you're going to work one more round of double crochet crochet stitches. So for rounds two and three, it's just simple rounds of double crochets joining at the end of each round. Uh, and then at that time, you can then fasten off and weave in your ends. In total, you're going to want three rounds of double crochet stitches. Now, also, uh, I should mention, if you would like your bag to be a little bit wider, you're welcome to do more rounds of double crochet, uh, but uh, for my bag today, I'm just doing three rounds. So go ahead, work rounds two and three, uh, double crochet stitch in each all the way around, and then meet me back here, and we will join the bag sides and bottom together. Once you have your bottom piece and sides and the handle worked, you'll have a piece that looks like this. You have your two sides. We're now going to start joining these pieces together. So we're going to start by taking one of our sides and our bag handle and placing the two sides wrong side together. Uh, so this is the front of my side piece, the front of my bottom side. I'm going to place it wrong side together and join your yarn anywhere 
uh, along the side piece working through both thicknesses and along that handle join your yarn uh, just with a slip stitch so I have my wrong sides together and the right side of my side is facing join it with a slip stitch anywhere along we're now going to work what is sometimes referred to as a crab stitch sometimes referred to as a reverse single crochet stitch and we're going to work uh, 112 reverse single crochets working through both thicknesses of my bottom and my side just around our bag so to work our reverse single crochet also known as the crab stitch uh, normally I would work from right to left but you're going to work in reverse this time so bringing your hook back in the previous stitch insert your stitch your hook through both thicknesses of the next stitch as you're working it's important that you keep your stitches lined up and don't skip any stitches along your bag or your handle or the side or your handle you're then going to grab your yarn pull it through both thicknesses again look two loops on your hook that are kind of twisted together yarn over and pull through you're going to work do continue that in the next stitch so bring your hook back to the previous stitch insert your hook through both thicknesses both stitches make sure you're not skipping uh, any I don't want to double work in that stitch yarn over pull it through yarn over pull through two loops you're going to continue to do that all the way around making sure that you're working into every single stitch or I should say not all the way around uh, just in 112 stitches working through both thicknesses so continue work 112 reverse single crochet and then meet me back here and uh, I'll show you the next step once you've worked uh, 112 stitches around your side so I have my top up here I've worked all the way around my 112 reverse single crochet stitches you're then going to continue working reverse single crochet stitches this time only working across the top of your bag so you can kind of let your handle fall and then just continue working reverse single crochets along the top of the bag only all the way across to the other side when you come across to the other side you can join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and then fasten off and weave in those ends so just continue working all the way across when you come to here join with a slip stitch fasten off and weave in your ends once you've come along the top of your bag after working that first side this is what it looks like you can weave in your ends you're then going to repeat the same for the second side so again I turn it uh, so that the bottom of the bag is down now I'm going to join my wrong sides together starting up in the same stitch across from where you're working so you kind of want to um, make sure it matches just by going across just like that you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch I have the right side of the other side of my blanket now or my bag now facing join with a slip stitch your yarn and you're then going to again work 112 reverse single crochet stitches all along your side of your bag when you come to the end of the 112 you should be across from where you ended the 112 on the other side 
you're then going to continue just working along the top of the bag only just as you did before so we're repeating our last steps for the second side of our bag once you have done that we're going to work simply work join your yarn on any of the corners work some reverse single crochet stitching along your bag handles on both sides fasten off weave in your ends and uh, your circle granny shoulder bag is complete so that's all that there is to working this granny bag if uh, you complete this project I'd love to see a photo of it you can send it to me via email or uh, share it with me on social media just be sure to tag rich textures crochet so thank you so much for joining me don't forget to subscribe and uh, check back again soon I look forward to seeing you again. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.